My name is Will Kelly, and I'm a monthly repair columnist for Vintage Guitar Magazine, as well as uh, own and operate the Hard Knocks Guitar Shop. So today what we're going to do is touch on a subject that a lot of uh, amateur guitar hobbyists find a little daunting, and that is, is repairing or replacing the electronics inside of a semi-hollow guitar. Unlike Fender style guitars which have the electronic components for the most part mounted directly to the pickguard so that when you unscrew it you've got full access to everything or a Gibson style solid body which has control cavities routed in the rear of the instrument with plastic cover plates exposing them. This guitar, the only way you can really access the electronics for the most part is through these curved openings in the guitar top that are known as F-holes. Uh, some guitars have routed out access holes in the top for the pickups to mount into. Some don't. But for the most part, these F-holes are where you're going to be doing the bulk of your work. So how do you get in to get to this last little tone control all the way that's a few inches removed from the edge of this very tiny F-hole space? How do you work in it? How do you wire them? Well, I'm going to show you how to do that, and it's not as hard as you think if you plan ahead using a full, uh, you know, complement of some easy-to-find tools that you have around your house. So let's get started. The next thing I want to talk to you about is this simple little tool that I want you to make. What it is is about a 10-inch length of solid core insulated wire with a rubber band looped and hooked around the end, and then the wires twisted in. Okay. So you have two rubber bands attached to the wire length at either end. This is going to serve us in a couple of different ways. First thing we're going to do is loop this around the underside of the knobs, twist it a few times, and then grab it, and it pops the knob right off without damaging or marring the surface. We take the loop, stick it under, twist it and it pops right off. So this is a great little tool to remove knobs safely without damaging any of the components. Use your hands to help guide the knob as it comes up so it doesn't twist you know, or bust off. But there we go. Now we're going to go ahead and unscrew the pots as well as the switch knob as well as the output jack. Okay, so we're going to get to that. We've taken the nuts and washers off of each one of the potentiometer locations as well as the three-way pickup selector switch and then basically pushed them down into the hole, got them free, and then laid them out here. Now what you've got, here's your pickup selector switch. This is the volume control for the neck pickup, the tone control for the neck pickup, and then this is the tone control for the bridge pickup and then you've got the volume control for the bridge pickup. So you can see by the wiring harness how it mimics this shape here which it leaves the F hole in that space basically visually open. So this is what we're working with. Looks like a jumble of wires. First thing we're going to do, whoever wired this did a good job at the time but these pots have had it. So uh, we're going to put the correct value caps in it too because these are 0.047's so they're going to be kind of dark sounding and we want a 0.022 which I think is going to be better suited towards the uh, humbucker filtertron style pickups that we do have. So I'm going to go ahead and start snipping all these tie wraps and separating all the wires. Basically to this attachment here we've got the two pickups coming right here and then we've got the ground wire coming from the bridge stud post. So two pickups and we've got a ground wire. Okay. Then the last thing we have is an output wire that leads to the jack. This is a really long nice one so rather than disassemble this jack I'm going to reuse this. So we've got two pickup wires, we've got a uh, output cable, and then we've got a ground wire. Those are the one, two, three, and four attachments that we're going to have to make to put all this stuff back together. That simplifies it. Okay, what I've done is taken a piece of clear plastic 
uh, transparency film, and it's got an adhesive side on one edge of it. So we've set it, taped it to the thing, to the top of the guitar, and then we're just going to take a uh, black sharpie and mark out the exact location of every hole for every component that we're going to install. And there's an exact template for uh, what we're going to need to do in terms of in, uh, making the wiring jigs. So not a bad little uh, solution here, and it's pretty cheap and inexpensive. You can find this film at any office supply store. Okay, now what I'm going to do is take the template that we made, tracing out the original positions, and we're going to turn the box, we've got just a normal shoe box right here, okay? We're going to look on the inside and lay the template in here, and then we're just going to mark these locations on the inside of the box, and there's a specific reason why, and I'll tell you this in a minute, but we'll just easily mark these down, make sure your template doesn't slip while you're, you know, noting each location. And then once we get these marked, this will be the what the top of the guitar looks like, okay? So the underside of the guitar, the wiring present part, is actually going to be on the outside of the box, which has a lot easier access than the inside of the box does, okay? So make sure you flip it around. You can either flip this upside down and mark it on the other side or just do it this way, okay? So now what we're going to do, we've got the four pot locations and the three-way switch location. We'll go ahead and drill those out and bolt our components onto it. Okay, so we're going to mount the components in the box. Now this is exactly how the underside of the guitar top is going to look. First thing you want to do when you're doing your wiring harness is take care of the ground. You need to ground each individual component. These are Barnes Model 82 Premium Vintage Pots, and as you can see, they're very unusual pots. Uh, they don't look like a typical uh, standard CTS or vintage pot. In other words, there's no metal case. This is all sealed plastic. So there's nowhere to solder a ground to. So what they do is they include this little washer with a soldering lug on it. Okay, And this merely slips over the shaft before you uh, attach it to the guitar and then the ground is attached directly to that. So when you start laying out the grounds you want to make sure that the grounding is on the outside of our wiring harness. So I'm just going to go ahead and get some black single strand wire and go ahead and connect these four washers together. These are the no load pots which uh, these are some samples, the prototypes that uh, Borns has sent to me. These are not in production as of yet, but um, these are pretty cool. There's a little detent at the end of it when it's fully up on 10, and uh, it takes it completely out of the circuit. Okay, what I've done is taken the output from the bridge volume control, that's the white wire, and run it to the input bridge side of the three-way switch. Then I've done the same with the neck volume control, this purple wire here, pink, and uh, run that to the neck side of the three-way switch. Then the output of the three-way switch is this black grounded cable goes to the output jack. I've gone ahead and installed some small tie wraps into position, but left them loose. Then I'm going to use these to secure the wiring loom as I continue to add wires as I make my connections. So next what we're going to do is we're going to connect the tone controls and the capacitors. This is just a long tie wrap, about 10 inches long. We're going to go ahead and cut the end off right here because we're not going to use it as a tie wrap. What we're going to do is thread it through to use it as a support or a firm you know, uh, inner backbone so to speak for the wiring harness. This will prevent the wires from getting kinked and uh, generally help protect the wires in all stages of installation as well. 
So we've just threaded that through there, and then as we continue to add wires, once everything's done, we'll tighten up the tie wraps, and you'll have a very stiff and firm wiring harness. That's basically just a long tie wrap with the ends cut off. 